A resource can be thought of as a single table within your database. Maybe you have posts, that would be a resource. Maybe you have series, that would be another resource. In order to create, read, update, and delete, or CRUD for short, we typically are going to need very similar routes defined for each one of these resources. Now, because of this, a lot of developers follow a naming convention whenever it comes to defining the routes for handling our CRUD operations for each of our resources. These are what are known as resourceful routes or resource routes. Resource routes are a set of routes that perform an individual action for each and utilize HTTP methods to keep the actual URL of the path short. So for example, a typical resource is going to have seven paths as we see here within the Adonis documentation. It's gonna have one for getting all records of a particular resource, for showing a create form for the resource, for creating the resource itself within the database, for showing a particular resource record, for showing the edit form for a particular resource record, for updating a particular resource record and for deleting a particular resource record. Now, in this case, the resource itself is a post. So within the path for the routes, we typically would use the plural form of the resource name. So in this case, the resource is post and we're using posts since that's the plural form of post. Then anytime that we're getting data or displaying a page for the resource, we are going to be using a get request Anytime that we're creating a record, we're going to be sending a post request. Anytime that we are updating a record, we're going to either be sending a put or a patch, depending on how we're updating. And then anytime that we're deleting a record, we're going to be sending a delete HTTP request. Now, when your application utilizes controllers for handling routes like Adonis.js does, we can mimic the resource route naming convention within our controllers to help keep things easy to understand. These are called resource controllers. Now, if you recall back to our ACE CLI lesson, you can easily create a resourceful controller by passing in node ACE make controller hyphen hyphen resource or just hyphen R, and that will create a resourceful controller for us that looks something like this, where it has a method for each particular resourceful route that a resource is going to need. So we have index for getting all records of a particular resource. We have create for displaying the create form. We have store for actually storing the record to create it. We have show for showing the details of a particular record. Then we have edit for showing the edit form for a particular record. And then we have update for updating a particular record within the database. And then we have destroy for deleting that single record within our database. So these methods line up one-to-one -one with what our resource is going to be expecting on a given controller. And now because of this parity, Adonis.js is able to make defining a route resource very simple. So all that we need to do is off of the route module, call a method called resource, provided the resource name, here we're providing posts, and then provided the controller that's going to handle each request for that resource, in this case, post controller. And then this screenshot is the actual output of the routes created just from the single line. And then one other thing to note is in addition to defining the path and the controller method that will handle each particular route of our resource, it's also going to name the resource route a given name applicable to what it's actually handling. So these are gonna match one-to-one -one with what the method is actually called on the controller that's going to handle our resource. So we have post index for the index method, post create for the create method, post store for the store method, and so on. So if we dive into our code base here and take a look at our routes, we have two partial resources, each handling posts. So we have the regular application posts, and then we also have our administrative posts as well. Now, both of these actually use a resourceful controller already. Some of the methods don't have handlers, but that's, that's okay. We can fill those in later on. Um, so let's go ahead and turn these individual route definitions into resourceful routes. So we'll start with the application first. So if we add in a couple of lines here and we call route.resource, provide it posts as the name of the resource, and then provide it the posts controller as the controller that's going to handle the resource, we have now just gotten rid of each one of these lines in addition to the actual group that each one of these is within. So we can get rid of all of those. In addition, since this resource is within a group, that is applying a name prefix of app, each one of these resource routes is going to get app appended as a prefix onto its name. So if we come into here and we do node ace list routes and we scroll up a little bit, we're gonna see this is the actual resource that we just created. You can see the post URLs all match exactly as we'd expect. And then due to that group, app is prefixed onto each one of the individual routes names. Now, while we're talking about naming, if we didn't want our post routes to actually be named 
posts dot whatever the action is, we can actually change what this post naming value is by tacking a as onto it and then providing whatever we need this to be. So maybe we don't need any other routes within this group so we can get rid of the group as a whole. And maybe we just want these to be called app for whatever reason. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we'll roll with it for right now. And we rerun this, what we're going to get is app dot and then whatever the actual action is for that individual route. So you can overwrite what the resource name is within each route created from this resource by providing an as method on it as well. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I just did, um, but just keep that in mind that that is an option. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and take a look at this controller that these are handling. So you can see at this present moment, we only have handlers for the index, store, show, update, and destroy method. Maybe we didn't actually need the edit or create methods at all. We can exclude those from the resource routes that are generated by providing dot accept and then providing an array of the names that we do not need, which were create and edit. So if we save this and we rerun our list routes and we scroll up, you can now see that we only have five post routes created from our resource and we are missing create and edit from there. Now we can also do the inverse of that if we only have a certain number of methods that we need this resource to have, we can provide only as an alternative. Now if we rerun this, we're only gonna get two routes created from our resource, which is specific to create and edit. Now in most cases, whenever you're actually creating an API, you're probably not gonna need this create and edit out of the box anyway, unless you need to query specific information to display on those forms. Remember, create and edit are used to show the create and edit forms for a particular resource. So unless you need to query specific data for these forms, you can actually always emit these two routes whenever you're dealing with APIs. And in order to help you with that, Adonis provides a helper method called API only that you can attach onto the end of your resource. And if we give this a save and we rerun this, you're gonna see that we have our five resource routes back. And again, we're missing the routes for create and edit since those typically aren't needed for API resources. So you can keep that in mind as well if you're dealing a lot with APIs. Now we haven't gotten into middleware yet. However, I would like to discuss how you apply middleware to resources since resources deal with multiple routes so that you know, as we progress, you'll have this in the back of your mind, or maybe you're coming back to this video. We'll go over it just in case. Okay, so now to apply middleware to a resource, we'll chain middleware off of the resource itself. And now here is where for all the other routes, you would either provide a string or an array of the middleware that you want to run for this particular route. However, resources handle and define multiple routes. So we're going to need a way to specify whether the middleware should run for each individual route that's within the resource or whether it should be applied to a specific route for the resource. And to allow us to do that, the resource is going to accept an object instead of a string or an array within the middleware method. And what this allows us to do is either define a particular route to apply the middleware to, or we can provide a star to define the middleware for the resource as a whole. So here we have just defined the auth middleware to the entirety of the resource. Now we don't have the auth middleware yet because we haven't installed the auth package, but we'll get into that later on. So the star applies the middleware to the entire resource, so each route within the resource. And then in order to define a middleware to a particular route within the resource, you would want to provide that method's name. So whenever creating, if we want to make sure that a user is authenticated whenever they are creating a record, you would want to provide store, and then you would provide the middleware to that key. Then whenever we're deleting a record, we'd want to make sure that only the owner of the record can delete it or an admin maybe. So let's do destroy and then we'll do owner or admin. So we can apply middleware to individual methods and routes within a resource by providing that method's name. And then again, these middleware don't actually exist at this present point in time. We're just going over how you can apply middleware once we actually get to middleware in future lessons. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove middleware as a whole so that it doesn't confuse anybody going forward. So sometimes your resource may belong to another resource, kind of like how comments belong to a particular post. In that case, you can make use of a nested resource to nest the resource within another resource. So let's go ahead and create a comment resource. So we'll do node ace make controller comment 
and we'll make this resourceful. And then let's go ahead and define a nested resource for these comments since they would be specific to a particular post. Okay, so let's do route.resource and let's do comments and then comments controller. And now, right now we've just created a normal resource. However, in order to make this nested, all that we need to do is utilize dot notation to specify what it's nested within. So we can do posts.comments. And now if we save this and take a look at our route list and we scroll up a little bit, you're going to see underneath our post resource that we have a new resource for our comments. Okay, so what we have going on here is whenever we get our comments, we're going to want that to be specific to a particular post. Whenever we create, update, store, delete, we're going to want that to be specific to a post. So what nesting resources does is it's going to first nest the resource parent name first within the path, and then it will define the resource underscore ID as the identifier for that resource so that now we have the post ID accessible for each one of our comment route handlers. So now we can query our comments based off of the post. We can create our comments for a particular post. We can delete the comment for a particular post since we have that post ID accessible within each one of our routes. And then since it's nested to do its due diligence, the name is also nested within that resource as well. So instead of just being app comments index, it's now app post comment index. Now there's going to be times where you can just utilize the ID for the comment to then determine what the actual post is, which makes this post ID within your nested resource kind of redundant. And in order to fix that, Adonis provides a, another method that we can call instead of just resource called shallow resource. So if we change our resource over to that for our comments, and we relist our routes and we scroll up and take a look at what's going on here. So here is our comment resource and you can see that we have three of our seven routes utilizing the post ID still and then we have the other four not utilizing the post ID nor the slash posts. However, all of the names still utilize app.posts as the prefix. So what's going on here is since these routes contain the comment ID within the route parameters, we can utilize that comment ID to actually get the underlying post that the comment belongs to. So we're eliminating the redundant post ID from within the route. And since we don't have the post ID, we no longer need slash posts to specify that the ID is for the posts. And then since these routes do not contain a comment ID of any sort, we would still want the post ID so that we can actually query the comments based off of the underlying post. So whenever we're getting comments for a particular post, we're still going to need that post ID so that we know what post to get the comments for. The same with create and the same with storing since we don't actually have a comment record within the database yet. So you can also utilize this shallow resource if you wanna keep your resource URLs clean and concise. All right, so we've got routing covered and we've got controllers covered. The next thing that we're gonna be covering is services, which will allow us to utilize the same code in multiple places throughout a single controller or multiple controllers. Mm -hmm.